that uh, you have requested some time for the committee to, uh, to, to uh, give a briefing as to the uh, new legislative initiatives. Perhaps we can start the hearing with that. Who will, who will you say, uh, Ben Penilao or Attorney, Attorney Austria? All right, Attorney Austria, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, we will work on the uh, resource versus water industry. Um, sir, um, the bill that you have filed, Senate Bill Number 2665, is the very same draft that we have used in the last technical working group and the committee hearing on the House Committee on Public Works and Health. So basically, um, the inputs were uh, the inputs from <coughs> the executive branch uh, and uh, the private sector were. Uh, Already taken in. Um, if you, but, uh, sir, um, since there are some questions about the budget and development monitoring facility, um, especially the way it is landed or the, uh, the phrase being used or the way it is worded in Senate Bill number 2665 has invited a lot of confusion. So, sir, um, if you will allow us, we will propose another language for PDM. Uh, another? Uh, you would, you would like yes, sir. Under our provision, we're in um, to clarify that we are that we are using a competitive selection process for the next. All right. So yeah, please uh, proceed to maybe even go to the uh, same points of uh, mm -hmm. uh, of uh, mm -hmm. six six five. Yes, sir. Sir, I will use um, Senate Bill Number Two Six Six Five as the reference. Okay. Um, I'll skip these sections one, two, and three for the definition terms. Um, section four um, states the authority of the implementing agencies to undertake the PPP project in accordance with the provisions with uh, the PPP Act. And um, there's also a provision under line page six, line twenty, up to twenty four. Page six. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Again, section four. Section four. Well, section four doesn't require that. Yeah, section okay. four. Um, we're here, um, we would require that, or we are proposing that in undertaking a PPP project under the PPP Act, um, all GOCCs and all its subsidiaries should secure the approval of the other implementing agency to which that GOCC is attached. And um, the and if the procurement uh, will be undertaken by the department or agency, uh, the governing board of the GOCC cannot remove its approval to be the project or award the contract in accordance with the approval of the uh, approving body. And then under section 5, sir, um, it pertains to uh, the priority project. Maybe you can explain why that is. Uh why that has been, why that uh, rule has been included? Well, um, there, there are other, I mean, uh, there are certain uh, projects because it is a certain that have uh, already been approved by the head of board, and uh, the principles of uh, certain GOCs are actually uh, the same uh, principles in, in the head of board or in the ICC. However, some alternates in uh, the GOCs they tend to uh, vote against the decisions of the principals in the network in the ICC, and that remains the project. So um, we're just saying whatever the decision taken by the, the principals in the investment coordination to be in the network, then the, the decision of the, of the alternates of, of the same uh, uh, agency sh should not uh, go against the decision of uh, the principals in the network or in the ICC. So uh, that this has happened before? Yes. That the GOCC's board voted against the project? Uh, not necessarily against, but uh, yeah, that's not the same. Before, does that not allow me to know? Okay. Uh, can we impose that, uh, that, uh, that rule upon the, because that's part of the function of the board member of the GOCC? Is that they vote on these projects and we, we cannot take that uh, take that function away from them. Actually, these are just the members or the principal, uh, the other principals, other <coughs> members that are that 
not have representation in the ICC or in the Netherlands, board, they can vote in accordance to the Republic. Okay, all right, let's keep going. Oh, yeah, okay, so, um, session 5 on the, the uh, implementing issues to include their development plans and uh, investment programs, those priority projects that will be implemented by PPP. And um, it has also a provision wherein those priority projects should be aligned with objectives of the Philippine Development Plan. And uh, the second paragraph mandates again the implementing agencies to submit their list of priority projects to the PPP Center so that it can be posted also on the website so on the website of the PPP Center. Um, section 6 um, pertains to the approval of the PPP projects. Under the existing laws, um, there are thresholds, threshold amounts um, indicated as to which the body should act on the project. Um, but right now, we are requesting the, um, the indulgence of the um, Congress if um, the threshold amounts, or we are requesting for some flexibility. And that the threshold, uh, threshold amounts be um, referred to in the IRR instead of addressing it in the law. Um, because, sir, right now the threshold amount for ISIS approval is 300 million and 500 million. We um, do not show the list of the threshold amount. The same thing, sir, with the uh, local uh, projects. And then section 7 refers to the project development and monitoring facility. It is an existing fund already uh, being used by uh, the government to fund feasibility studies, procurement of transaction advisors uh, during the bidding stage. Um, and just recently, um, the uh, procurement of property advisors and independent consultants uh, may also be uh, procured under the BDMM. Um, so we just put it in here in this provision to institutionalize uh, PDNM. Now, uh, there are certain questions or in the fourth paragraph, sir. We made reference of indefinite delivery contracts. So that invited a lot of confusion to those who are not familiar with PDNM, um, saying that PDNM does not use a competitive selection process. If I may, sir, I would like to read the proposed language of the PPP Center so that uh, we could clarify that issue. What would be your proposed language is? The final answer um, the procurement of consulting services shall be conducted through a two stage competitive selection process. The first one would be the establishment of panel pre qualified consultants. And the second stage would be the selection of consultants from the panel for individual consultants of contrast within a fixed budget ceiling. The procedure for such procurement shall be prescribed in the IRR of this act. <coughs> to facilitate access to global best practices in PPP and enhance value for money, the selection of uh, consultants for, for project preparation and transaction support, and for the advisors, all with PPP expertise as well as independent consultants and other um, and other consulting services that may be supported or financed through the DMF shall also be open to international firms subject to existing laws on the practice of profession to serve the Filipino nationals. Okay, can you give us the can you give us the the, the new language that you're proposing? Yes. That's going to be that you want to replace paragraph four with what you just read. Yes. Yes, I will be proposed to you. All right, uh, keep going, please. And, um, for answers to that proposal, sir, at under Section 8, um, we have retained the requirements under the existing law in projects which are not in the priority list of projects may be considered for answers to that proposal um, or those involved in the concept or technology. Um, with the presentation of the options, treatment options, once the implementing agency receives an, an unsolicited proposal, so um, the way it is written under Senate Bill Number 2665, um, the first it appears um, based on the comments that we receive from the House Committee. Um, it appears that the first option would be to reject the proposals. Um, so we just rearrange it. 
uh, we would like to propose that um, we arrange this provision by um, I th by putting in number one the Swiss challenge uh, if the implementing agency accepts the unsolicited proposal and subject the project to uh, the Swiss challenge process. The second one would be an option to uh, tender the uh, unsolicited proposal as a competitive or solicited view subject to reimbursement of the development cost. And the third one would be the rejection of the proposal. So you're basically uh, arrange, yeah, just arrange. arranging it, not that the language is... Uh, so you're moving, reject the proposal, which is now A to C. That's it. Yeah. All right. I can see why. <laughs> I mean, uh, default setting will be to be general. All right, okay. And then also, sir, we are proposing that um, this one has also been raised in the House Committee where the, um, in order from, uh, for answers to the proposals or the rejection option to be not an event, another venue for corruption. Um, the, uh, the, uh, we are proposing that uh, the PPP Center should extend assistance to uh, the implementing agency in the review and evaluation of the answers to the proposals that uh, they will receive. Um, it will also serve as an oversight so that um, the private proponents will not be uh, left hanging or waiting for the action of implementing agencies. So what is the, what exactly is the assistance? Uh, what form does that assistance come in? It's more technical assistance. Technical. Okay. When does that when does that uh, when is that triggered? When? Uh, it's normally sir when the unsolicited proposal is received by the implementing agency, the PDP center and the national union then copies it. And uh, when we receive the copies, that's the time that we call for ADP and the implementing agency to discuss on how to move forward with the answers. And to, to check whether the submitted that specific proposal uh, is complete or not certain. So, like a technical review? Yeah, technical review. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hmm. Under Section 9, sir, um, it provides a um, more or less <coughs> comprehensive uh, process that meet and principles that need to be observed in building out uh, PPP projects. Um, under second paragraph, we stated that the video projects can be undertaken under uh, single or two stage system. And then the third paragraph speaks of um, to whom shall the uh, contract be awarded. Um, it, the bidder should pass the pre-qualification stage uh, for having satisfied the minimum financial organization and legal standards required by the PPP Act. It should, um, it should have also passed the technical and uh, financial uh, uh, proposal evaluation. And then um, the succeeding paragraphs enumerate the instances of uh, a single and comply, single complying and responsive bid submission. Uh, it's a negotiated, instances of negotiated uh, contract. And um, this, the next paragraph, sorry, is um, Mr. Chair. We are so same section, sir. In all stages. Yes, but what is the next paragraph? Sir, the, in all stages after the enumeration of the negotiated contract. In okay. all stages. In all stages, of the, stages yeah. Yes, sir. This one is a new provision under the existing law. Protest mechanism or appeals mechanism applies only to pre-qualification stage. But right now, but right now, what we are proposing is that um, this protest mechanism should apply to all stages of the uh, of the review. Why was this proposed in the first place? That only the pre-qualification that there be a protest uh, mechanism. I suppose, sir, uh, the, uh, the original offers of the video, you know, they did foresee that uh, certain issues would be raised after the big qualification. But right now, what we've experienced is even after we've awarded the project for the system of our files, which is uh, we've got no clients. Well, that not that just another bureaucratic process that will get in the way of the implementation? Because uh, <coughs> I, can, I can already see that uh, they're losing bidders. Or did not, those who did not get the award will, will protest at every stage of the stage of the, the process. 
So instead of speeding up the process, we could slow it down. What we are proposing also, sir, is in finding which is a presentation of the project cost. Right now, they can still file and uh, use uh, another uh, process to file their protest without uh, even finding a, uh, a fee for their protest. So uh, what happens is the process uh, the is still derailed. Right now, we are hoping that uh, with the filing fee, which is a presentation of the project cost, that will uh, mitigate the nuisance uh, filing of uh, so just like in court, half of one percent of the project cost. And um, the existing provisions. Okay, okay, it's half of one percent is at every stage. So if you okay. let's say you, you file a protest at the pre-qualification, uh, you lose the protest, then you do it again. Yes, for example, sir, uh, if they file for a pre-qualification, uh, for a protest at pre-qualification and then uh, the, uh, the decision of the SMAC uh, is uh, overturned by uh, implementing the of the President. And then they proceed with the meeting, and then at the outcome of the meeting, they still file another protest, and they still have to pay that uh, one, the final. Part to Section 12, how do you impose a condition on something like an LGU, for example? Um, you cannot tell an LGU that they have to provide the, whatever it is, the licenses or um, uh, the permits. Uh, it, 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 is, it, is, it is, again, it is part of the legislative function of the LGU. And I don't know if we can impose upon them uh, this uh, automatic grant. Um, and for that matter, I mean, I'm more familiar with the case of the LGUs, but for all of the other agencies that you are mentioning here, the executive the regulator, licensing authority, or LGU shall automatically grant in favor. Uh, that is the that is usurpation of function. Uh, if you, I, I don't know. I have you studied it uh, properly? Can can we can we in fact impose that upon uh, upon and that, that because that is precise their precise function. Their precise function is to determine whether or not to provide these licenses, authorities, uh, certificates, permits, whatever it is. So you cannot take that function away from them because that's precisely why they were created. How do we, how, 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 what's your, what is your uh, interpretation of that? Well, uh, as I think we, have, we also stated in the provisions here that subject to the submission of uh, all the required documents. And even during project preparation, for example, for toll roads, we engage the, uh, or the LRP in terms of, uh, of uh, uh, rates. We engage already the, the, the body that's supposed to be the franchise, very important. I, I can see what you're getting at here, because uh, sometimes the, well, I think mostly the LGUs are not good. Uh, but again, maybe we have to rethink, we have to go back, uh, because I cannot see us going to uh, putting in the law saying that the permits, certificates, uh, whatever is required, uh, will automatically be issued uh, without, without it. Because that, that, that pretty much makes them a rubber stamp. And you cannot, that, 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 that does not allow them to perform their function. Soldier office, maybe we can help us with this. Uh, we have in section 12 the automatic grant of administrative franchise license or permit. Can we actually do that? Because I think every LGU is going to object to this kind of, this uh, provision. Yes, Your Honor, uh, that, that is a that very valid uh, observation. Uh, it is the same concern that we share because it impinges on the powers of the local government. Uh, the same is the same uh, observation that we have when it comes to uh, what constitutes projects of national significance. We're asking that they be defined more clearly. Uh, no, I think I, the, the, the purpose is clear yes, that they don't want, because LGU sometimes uh, try to take advantage of this situation, uh, the right of way, and 
and that holds up a very important project. But we, I don't know, maybe we can, you can help us with trying to find the, another, another method than imposing an automatic grant. Yes, yes sir, because uh, uh, an automatic grant will really impinge on their power to create their own sources of energy services and charges. Yeah, but we have to, again, balance that with the fact that they are projects of national security. Yes. So I think the, the examples that we, we talked about in previous hearings are essentially that, uh, uh, you know, you should be casadet, you do something about uh, a big road project. Uh, each LGU that the road project goes to imposes some kind of, uh, some kind of limitation or some kind of, uh, uh, it usually has to do with right of way, it usually has to do with uh, uh, all of those other permits. So we, maybe this deserves a second look. Uh, let's just, let's, we, we come back to it when, uh, uh, when the time comes. Never mind, uh, and in the meantime, Attorney Oscar, please uh, proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, section 13 speaks of the extension <coughs> or uh, extension of an existing okay. infrastructure facility without the necessity of going to the public media. Um, sir, so, but it can only be done if the uh, cost shall not exceed 25% of the price adjusted the original project cost and that um, any subsequent expansion or extension shall not... If you say price adjusted, you will index it to the, to the original <laughs> yes. cost. And Section 14 um, aims to promote transparency and uh, accountability in terms of contracts and public disclosure. Um, it, expressed, it, it expressly provides that um, all PPP contracts shall be considered as public documents. However, it is quite inevitable that there are some contracts which have um, confidential or proprietary information. And um, we are proposing, sir, that um, they need to be kept only for uh, uh, they may only be kept confidential for a certain period, um, but the responsibility shall be lodged to the head of the implementation. Yeah, I remember, I remember. Yes. Okay. And Section 15 is a reiteration of Republic Act 8975. Um, so remember, we had an extensive discussion on the uh, point prohibition against uh, the regular towards for the issuance of any temporary state orders and injunctive reliefs against the implementation of the PPP projects. And um, section 16 provides uh, or proscribes regulatory bodies from entering into any PPP contract that they uh, regulate. Well, this section, uh, this section of prohibiting the issuance of the uh, soldier Miranda to be the comment of this uh, section, section 15. But we are using as a ref as the reference uh, uh, 2665, uh, Senate Bill 2665. Uh, yes. So I think we're referring to uh, another version. Of the Section 46. The older one. The older one, no? yes. Because it is in, the, in this one that we're using now, Section. Uh, uh, yes, Your Honor, but uh, we would just like to point, at, uh, point out that the provision mentioned by the Honorable Assistant Solicitor General in Senate Bill 459. This still is also on Yes, the I understand. I understand. But just in terms of clarity, because it was yes. in section yes. 0. Uh, we are in section 15. Um, the instruction in the last group hearing is to, uh, upon the recommendation of the OSG during that time, it's um, for the committee to seek the opinion or um, comments of the Supreme Court. Okay. That we have actually sent the sent the uh, uh, request for an opinion. We have not yet received it. All right. Oh, yes. Your Honor, may just manifest that this is a very big uh, concern of the 
private sector, especially with foreign investors. Because of the uncertainty of filing of, PR, of, of uh, parties filing for TROs to the Supreme Court, this, this has a huge contingent liability impact on uh, the government. So unless we get a clarity on the time period, then that, that becomes uh, our PPP part, especially now that we are rolling out huge infrastructure projects that would have an impact on the investment fund. Are there any other other situations where we have where there is an imposition from a time limit on the Supreme Court's TRO? See that one of the limit? That's precise, precisely one one of the features of the Supreme Court TRO that is not from time limit. Uh, we are sort of making an exception that uh, we will get some PPP project. Anyway, let's wait the Supreme Court uh, opinion. You know, they're very sensitive when you try to reduce powers <laughs> for the Supreme Court. So, but anyway, uh, Attorney Austria, yes, again, let's keep going. Okay. We have uh, some ground to call. Thank you. Session 16 prescribed that a uh, regulatory body shall no longer develop and participate in the contract that will regulate pieces to avoid the uh, conflict of interest. And section 17 at least that um, the all projects, all PPP projects shall be uh, undertaken or shall be implemented in accordance with the design, plan, specifications, standards, and costs approved by the implementing agency and appropriate approving body. And it shall be under the uh, supervision of the implementing agency concerned. Section 18, uh, this is in the uh, Accordance with the constitutional uh, provision, uh, working the state recognizes and dispensable of the uh, private sector and at the same time provide appropriate incentive mechanism uh, for private sector participation. So uh, we are just uh, maintaining the old provision, uh, allowing the projects to be entitled to incentives um, as provided by the omnibus investment rules. So the trigger would be the uh, excess one million. Yes, sir. There will be an amount. And section 19 um, prescribes for or I, um, defines projects of national significance and um, mandates that um, they shall be entitled to the following incentives. The first one would be um, an exemption from any and all real property taxes levied under Republic Act number 7160. Uh, so far as real properties are concerned which are actually directly used for the project. Um, second would be an exemption from any and all local taxes, fees and charges. And the third one would be automatic grant or issuance of the necessary business permits and renewals in favor of the new project component. But there are certain criteria that must be complied before a project can be considered as national significance. How what is the process for the for the uh, to, for the classification of certain projects, are, is, is there, are there criteria, strict criteria, or is it the discretionary uh, you know, uh, chair, decisions? You know, there are certain criteria that needs to be fulfilled before it can be considered as projects of national significance. And after satisfying those criteria, it has to be um, endorsed to the investment coordination committee, and there has to be your prior consultation first with the ILG. I think perhaps to be glad to, to be clearer, you may you may we may include that the president may classify certain projects as, uh, as, uh, as projects of national significance. And perhaps you can include the criteria so that it's very, very clear what are the criteria that need to be met for uh, uh, for a project to be considered of national, uh, to be classified rather of national significance. So under the succeeding paragraph, other, we have proposed uh, a certain 18 number of uh, trade units. It's in the next, it's in the next. No? Okay. Um, Thank you. I, I, I'm thinking more about the process that the, the, the process that the president goes through uh, in test, to test a project as to whether or not it meets the criteria for or to, to be classified as nationally significant. So 
Sir, uh, for, um, the Netherboard is chaired by the President. So probably during the Netherboard presentation, if uh, the President confirms it's a project of national mm -hmm. so think that's after the people is going to clear them. That's an end. So the criteria, as you, as, as you is just energy, no road, mass transit, water, sewage, and, 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 and such other projects. So, sir, the purpose of that, after considering the issue of the, sir, ah, here, yes. so we the, okay, for a project, qualify as a project of national significance, it shall meet the following criteria. First, um, the total project cost falls within the threshold set by the ICC. Oh yes, we've seen this before, right? Yes. Oh. And the second one would be uh, the project has a direct economic impact, which should not be less than the threshold set by the ICC. Um, the third one would be the project has a direct positive impact on at least two cities or municipalities. And finally, the project has eight uh, new jobs. <coughs> Section 22 again, sir, is um, about the PPP governing board. It is already an existing body created under Executive Order Number 126, issued by the President last uh, 2013. It is a central policy making body of uh, uh, the government in so far as PPP matters are concerned. Uh, the composition would be coming from the various oversight agencies uh, like uh, the Department of Finance, the DMJ. DPI, Executive Secretary, Executive Director of the PPP Center, and one private sector coming from the National Competitiveness Council. Okay, I, I would just like at this point to acknowledge the arrival of uh, Senator Al Brecht, uh, who is uh, now to be provided for, for our hearing today. Uh, good uh, morning. Let me just take a chance of taking us to the host. Uh, all right, please, please proceed. Uh, uh, Section 25 provides for miscellaneous provisions. One is for joint venture agreements, um, so stating that the ownership of the facility may be transferred to the implementing agency or to the project component, provided uh, that the transfer shall be made under competitive market conditions. Let me begin by asking uh, how do we improve the bill in regard to transparency issues? One, protection for consumers and users of these facilities. And what should be the role of Congress in identifying priority, priority projects? Well, let's begin with transparency issues. Sir, um, the with respect to the transparency issues, there are several uh, mechanisms that were put in place uh, to ensure transparency in the PPP. Uh, Procurement. So first, uh, with respect to uh, the approval process, there are uh, pr the project should undergo uh, the ICC and the board approval process, especially for national PPP projects. Um, the second one would be we have an express provision on uh, public disclosure for or, for all PPP. Projects. Let's get to that uh, portion of section 14 on contracts and public disclosure. I will get to section 14 on the contracts and public disclosure. There are only two paragraphs here with regard to public disclosure. Uh, let me give an example uh, according to uh, usage uh, and all that. Today, it is not clear to the users, the vendor users, let's say of many of your PPP projects, let's say in the case of LRT one line extension, LRT2, MRD3, for example, no? Ano yung magiging fare box matrix niya? How did you beat that out? And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm relating this to uh, not only transparency, but what is it in, what is the participation of the user of this PPP project? So, meaning to say, when you solicited these projects, when you tendered the bidding, for example, no? Did you already say that it has happen in pressures for the user? Uh -huh. And LRT one line extension, LRT two, MRT three, and then escalation in prices immediately. Yes, I use it. Good morning, uh, sir. Good morning. Actually, sir, in the preparation of our projects, we do conduct a willingness to pay survey. 
So kasama po yun sa process natin the project preparation. So for this type of service, uh, um, our consultants willingness, willingness to pay service, service and also affordability of the projects. And we peg the we peg the uh, the fare based on the result of that willingness to pay survey and uh, affordability uh, survey. Can you give us a can you submit to us? How do you conduct those surveys? Yeah. You I like like that. That. I'd like to see a willingness to pay survey because. Uh, well, just the recent the recent uh, experience of uh, uh, last January when the prices went the, the fare went up. Uh, I don't think people were willing to pay that uh, that increase, but uh, apparently we made a survey and uh, it indicated that they were. We can submit to the committee, sir, the willingness to pay service and be conducted. Let me relate it to this is a There are premium payments. Hindi naman libre yan. Uh, hindi, hindi libre yan. Magkano yung premium payment sa LRT one-line expense? Uh, for LRT line one, sir, it's around 9 or 11 billion. 9 or 11 billion. Uh, but it's not up to answer. 20% and then over the uh, um, stock na mm -hmm. siya over the network. Okay, so let me, let, let me get to that now. Assuming wala yung premium payment niya, pwede ba bawasan yung rate for the user? Theoretically, yes, please. Sir, uh, as far as I recall, in determining the fair... So can you payment, answer the question? Theoretically, if you have a premium payment, can you reduce the fares for the user? Then, sir, we will distort the, the market. Like, for example, the bus so now, Can you please answer the question first? Then, we can, then I will allow you uh, to qualify. Okay. Uh -huh. Actually, sir, we set na natin at the onset the fair. So you are the ones who set the fair right away when you tender the bidding. Yes. And so did you ask everyone to bid? No, sir. Because the best bid for LRT line one based on our projection and estimation, it would actually need viability cap funding from the government to make it affordable to our users. So, no tinander po yung LRT line one, meron pong 5 billion na binibigay ang gobyerno para sa kanina. We will get to that. Can you please first answer the question? Theoretically, without the premium payments, pwede ba natin mawasan yung fares to the users? Sir, I believe... And then I will allow you to qualify. Yeah, if I may, the way we tender nga po yung LRT line one is that based on our projections, to make it affordable to our users, the government needs but to provide a 5 billion viable pickup fund. Answer the question. So we weren't you expecting... You know you would have difficulty in passing this bill if you're not forthright with us. No, I'm very forthright, uh, sir. No, what we're saying the is... We're, the next. Uh, Pwede ba natin bawasan ang presyo kung walang premium payments? We weren't expecting a premium <coughs> When so, we no, 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 but that's not the that's but not, not an that's answer it. You said we were trying to do we if if we if we were to take a step back in line and uh, we did not make the premium payments, would would they would there still have to be that fair increase? So instead instead of think think, think about it not from today. And that we will remove the premium payments that you have, that you have made, and then we will lower the price. No, let's take it from the very beginning. If we did, if you did, there were no premium payments <coughs> made by the by the PPP, would the fare still remain as it was previously? I'm sorry, but I will not state it properly, sir. Nung kinander po natin yung project, we weren't expecting a premium. I, we, I will get to that in a second. Yeah, yes, sir. And then... I will get to that. We will, not, we will go around in circles. No, no, sir. We will if you it. allow me, sir. And I then, will allow you, but please answer the question first. We couldn't because we already set the big parameter. Okay, let me get to your point now. Okay. You are saying that when you identify the project and when you study the project, there is a viability funding gap. Meaning to say, I don't know what you yet. Let's put it in simple terms. May subsidy pa ang gobyerno. Kasi hindi, Tama? hindi, hindi makabawi yung, yung private sector. Private Yun ang kinisip nila. So they pitted it out. And then the private sector said, uh, no, we don't need that subsidy. And we're willing to pay you a premium based on the bid parameters. 
that to me tells me that you guys didn't do your job kung ganun talaki ang diferensya. What was the funding gap? What was the viability gap? The funding gap. The... Of the first thing one by itself. The... Five, sir. Five billion. Teka, 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 teka. One by one, you said. Kung five billion yun, and you ended up with a premium payment of 11, that's a 16 billion gap. Is that correct? Yeah, but if we're, the new okay. five, yes, sir, you five billion na po yun is paid uh, during construction period, five years or four years during construction. Yung 11 billion na po yun is over the life of the 35 years of construction. The, the present value, the difference might be very little between okay. what we're uh, providing to them at the I understand. All I'm saying is this. That's why I'm looking for how do we protect users and consumers here. Okay, remember, uh, I agree that BOT is a good concept. PPP is a good concept. We do not want to give PPP a bad name. We understand that there is so much liquidity in the system. There is so much money in the sector that we can tap to build our infrastructure. No doubt about that. And that's why we're looking for ways to improve our BOT law so as not to give it a bad name so that we can pursue many infrastructure projects all over the country. So, hindi tayo magkalaban dito. I find a bill, you want a bill, the chairman of the public works to me realizes the need to have a law, and that's why we're here to discuss how do we protect users and consumers? How do we have full public disclosure also? Alimbawa, nung binibalik niya yan, even members of Congress don't even know it. What will be the user fee set? I've asked for it in the budget and the I've not given you a complete response. Uh, uh, we met yesterday at Warren in Austria. Do you have the documents that I was requesting for? What will the fair matrix look like? Let's say for the LRT1 line extension, LRT2, MIPT. You have, a, you have some material on the server. This is what I'm... I'm, I'm uh, that is really Yes, sir. You uh, don't have anything with you now, so you can have a... None, none right now, sir, but we will provide a committee. Uh, and then in, in person, I was... Uh, uh, you have more than 50 projects. How many have been awarded? 11. Nine. Nine. Okay. Um, Nine. We know already that LRT1 line extension is gone. Okay. Tinatanong ng gagamit niya, magkano ba ang magiging presyo? How much will they be paying more right now for the energy? I'm not taking a chance to go on. What I'm saying is simple, no? Mas maganda siguro yung pabawasan ng bid, pababaan ng bid, to benefit the user. Rather than pataasan ng bid, premium payments na ang kikita ay gobyerno. That's what I'm saying. Hindi naman public if you need to do it. I think, you know, because in the situation that's being, uh, that we are looking at now, it looks like nagregado kayo sa private, uh, sa private sector side. Because they came back and said they do not need that, uh, that funding. Uh, and then, the, this uh, lump sum payment that you gave, to the, uh, to the rather to the project to the, the, that was given by the government to the project uh, was paid up. Is paid is now going to be financed or is going to be funded through an increase in affairs. Um, that's why I'm very that's how how you came to that situation is very curious for me because that's why I'm also very curious to see the willingness to pay survey because. Um, Essentially, when it comes to the LRT and the MRT, people have no choice. Uh, so I don't know how you can, you can determine willingness to pay. They do not get to work, or they cannot get home from work um, if they don't use LRT and MRT. So their willingness to pay, in, in that case, is a total monopoly would be infinite. So that's why I don't know how, how viable that kind of survey is. So I'm very curious to see how it's done. We will, sir. Actually, sir, I'm going to compare Gen R and the uh, uh, 
Kasi ngayon, compared to past years, masyadong mura ni MRT sa ni. Kaya ngayon, marami tayong mga buses na walang laman sa EDSA. Lahat ngayon nagsisiksikan sa MRT. Tapos, um, uh, yung mga, those who can actually fit. Nagsisiksikan sa MRT kasi kulang ang On top of that, sir. Kulang ang Not only that, but because kulang pa yung supply, we need to have more MRTs and RTs. Uh, how many do you have? MRT 1 or MRT 1, 2, and 7? When was the last time we built one? Uh, last time in 3, 4, 5, 6. Tama? Okay. Uh, and many more issues, huh? That's why we want to build more. Eh? Okay? I have many proposals here in Congress, uh, such as there will be a hearing later on. All road users have to be used for a subsidy for mass transport, transport to build more peace. Can you tell me where I'm coming from? No? Similar to what they do in Singapore. Yes, sir. Okay, so, but again, theoretically, without the premium payments, who can be the Hindi Patahatan, Papa for the user? That's the idea. Remember, we're saying that the private sector is more efficient than the public sector. Okay? Kaya posibleng nagkaloko-loko. That's the philosophy that we have here. Okay? Now, binigay mo sa private sector, pero pataas ang presyo. Parang ganun eh. That's the point. Okay? Where is the... Uh, how do we benefit the user of the project? That means the private sector is more efficient. The price hindi dapat tumaas masyado or pareho man lang sana or bumaba because of their efficiencies. That's the idea. Diba? Yes, please. Uh, Actually, sir, uh, when we do a uh, project yung private uh, capital to be needed or uh, the toll rate na kailangan natin impose such that uh, makabawin yung private sector, hindi natin ang kita rin, yung externalities to the project. There are, there are uh, some leaders, meron silang iba pang mga, uh, uh, what you call it, mga businesses that would uh, uh, nakikita if gagawin sila yung gagawa ng project na yun. And that we cannot second guess in our projections. So, so, sa core assets lang kita tayo. Why not? At saka, hindi, mahirap naman, mahirap alam yun na, ah, oh, nung itong conglomerate na to, they're into this business, ah, they're into this business. So, uh, sobrang maraming variables na. So, we just focus on the core assets. No, I understand that. I'm not questioning that. Okay? That's precisely my point. Ha? Papawasan ang presyo tayo. Instead of them paying a premium to government, at marami akong lupa dito eh, halimbawa, tarahal eh, kaya ala ko. Can't we do it? Because I'm not going to make so much on the road that I'm going to build for, for the government and, and charge the user fees. But I will benefit from the land development. I understand that. And therefore, the bid should be lower for the user. In the premium payment of Abayana, that's my point. Okay, now, that's why I'm looking in this bill. How do we make it beneficial to the user? Yes, because I don't read anything here, and maybe we're working with you. We're working with you. Can you take a look at this section 14? Parang kulang to, that's what I'm saying. How do we make it uh, beneficial to the user, the consumer, one, and two? What can it beat out natin yan? Hindi maniwala what the fares will look like. Eh kasama mo sa tender ninyo immediately. You decided immediately mataas ka agad eh. Okay, and then you bid it out according to that. No? Okay. And this is from the, your, from the government and PPP and to the private sector and it's so different. In, 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 in we the, focus, oh, we, uh, I think sir, we focus on the core asset, and they focus on the other businesses that can't cross that. We, we really want you, to, you cannot impute those, but it is a standard business model. We, we can't, sir, we can't. Other sources cannot be imputed into the... Well, the usual, yung mga, yung mga stations, yun, pwede natin yung kuhanan. 
But for example, if you're talking of uh, also using the line as the 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 channel for fiber, uh, communication fiber lines, optics. yeah, fiber optics. Do we want to put that in knowing that there's a foreign uh, player that has no capacity to do that? So, but parang parang do not to be over aggressive in our projections. Papano pag uh, in the end talaga pa lang viability ka pang kailangan mo lang na We would have wasted two years of preparation in building all these projects. It, it would entail delay again in this critical. For yeah, user fees and then let them be along with the Pamura. If they want to ask for a subsidy, that let them in the BD. We can only we can only fix one big parameter. Pag kada lawa yung variables natin, hindi hindi pa na di pa natin nagkaralan din naman. If we have two variables, masaya magulo. The only variable is user for me. Should we judge it? Should we judge it? Should we judge it? Should we judge it? And this is the quality we want to do for this. To me, it's as simple as that. We don't have to complicate it. So we were on the point. Let's go back to the main, the second point I was discussing earlier. Transparency. Hindi alam ng publiko. Eh, kami na eh. Pagkatawa na kami eh. We are representatives of the media. What will the fair matrix be? Can you submit this to us? And it's not enough that you post it in the website, your parametric form, but then you need to learn how to buy it. So before I answer your question, how do we use it? Why not answer the question first? Then you can modify it. Can I answer the question first? If, for example, we use the user fee, Si Tall Roads na yung SLEX na ang per kilometer niya is 7 and 14. Pagkatapos, pagka gumami tayo ng Tall Roads, nagtayo tayo ng another Tall Road, na user pay na gamitin natin, pwede maging libre yun. So, gusto pa natin magkaroon ng distortion o maging 1 peso ng per kilometer. So, what? So, sino makikinabang doon? The users of the audience. Okay. Pero sir, pero pinifix mo na yung viability ka. Hindi problema. Meaning the taxpayers from other parts of the country will fund so that the users of this specific tone road in Metro Manila will be less expensive. I do not see your point. I do not understand your point. You say kaginawa. Now, if you're going to tell me and echo the same principle of DOTC, that means that now we subsidize it MRT3, that is not true. Because most of the taxes come from Metro Manila. Most of the GDP is done here in Metro Manila. That is not true. Okay, anyway, let me move on. So the point is, there will be an appropriation to pay that it is an obligation, it becomes a debt. Yes. Okay. So papayaran, pero that may not be the priority. Alibaba, we may not agree that that should be uh, privatized. But there are certain functions of government you cannot privatize. I'm just giving you an example. I'm not making a judgment call. Kung priority talaga yan, wala naman user fees yan. And we look at fiscal responsibility and being conservative with budgeting as well. Eh di kung priority yan, ilagay na lang sa budget na huwag kang ipipipip yan. Ang kailangan ipipip sa Timugo, airports, seaports, Consalta, Tall Road, ano ba ba? And some others as well. Thank you, Senator Ruff. Before we end, I'd first like to acknowledge the Rebel Mr. Lito on the last part and get the chance to see his money. He's the Executive Director of the Philippines. Constructors Association. But before we end, I would like to, since we have talked about the transparency issue uh, and some specifics on the uh, uh, mass transit system, I'd like to give a chance to the Foundation for Economic Freedom uh, to give uh, uh, it, they said me that they had a position paper, but it doesn't really have a, the idea that there is no real position paper. So perhaps we can hear Mr. Santiago when you speak for the uh, 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 Mr. Chairman, uh, we would submit a written position paper later on if that is needed. We are willing to work with the committee and the Senate to refine and improve the bill. 
I was surprised earlier why the executive director of the center could not answer the question on the LRT1 extension about fares. When the concession agreement, Your Honor, just to answer your question with the executive director of the PP Center debated, there is a provision in the concession agreement of the LRT1 extension for government to subsidize it with regards to the PP issue. Be that as it may, I would like to proceed with the fact that uh, this is the third amendment of the bill that was enacted 15 years ago. In effect, we are amending the law within three times within 15 years. And so we should be learning from the past TPP projects and all the mistakes that it We should recognize that there were TPP projects even before the BOT law. The first one was in 1890, granted by the Spanish government, when the Tacopan Manila railway line was built. The two, rail pro the two PPP projects happened during the time of the father Senator Marcos, the North to South and the South to South Tollway, which were considered the first two toll expressways in Asia. The only toll project, the only PPP project successful at that happened during, that happened during the Korea Field Administration is the MRCT that was awarded, I think, in 1997 or 1988. Since then, we have uh, looked at the experience and this law, in fact, is considered in Asia as one of the pioneering and modern law. Now, when we are trying to amend it, we should learn from those mistakes. The biggest one, of course, is Terminal 3. Why did it happen? It should not happen again in this case. Will the contingent provision here be provided? Cover, for example, with the liability that happened on Terminal 3. So, we should be conscious, in other words, of those mistakes, so that we will improve it. Uh, one of the biggest issues here is unsolicited proposal. Uh, this were, uh, that created a lot of headaches to the government in terms of contingent liabilities. Maybe a role for Congress could happen here. All availability based payment of contract of PPP type or unsolicited proposal will require congressional approval or concurrence of the joint uh, oversight committee. Uh, the, the processing period, uh, the other question, for example, of the local government. Since there is a provision here of definition of national significance, the simple fact is all projects that are not of national significance performed by local government units will not require approval from the national system. Very simple provision. And it covers the local government code and independence of the NGOs. After all, it is not national significant, straightforward, because this is one of the complaints of the local government, the processing period is too long. So the bill should actually try to look at the processing period. Right now, at least nine months, if you just follow the procedure. Of course, with the current implementing agencies, this becomes 18 months. Uh, when you talk of some government agency that, you know, cook. The current BOT law is stringent, for example, on the bill of the law. The one that you can implement your order is uh, at a single rail <laughs> kilometer in six years. BOT. <laughs> and I the always said last year see. publicly <laughs> that in the six years of the Aquino administration, your honor, that a single rail kilometer will be built and completed. And I stand by that judgment, even if they have two years more to go. Uh, Mr. Chair, just one question. Uh, Mr. Santiago, uh, do you think that the DOD should be added in the DOD? Your Honor, for a time, uh, for a time it was under uh, combined when I was in government. That's why I'm familiar with it. Uh, when I was in government, the two were together. 
The problem with that, Your Honors, the department becomes too big. And suppose you have a reverse appointment of secretaries where the other one is, can make a government and the other. And if you combine it and you have a situation, you may even have a bigger problem. So better to have non-monopoly in this kind of situation to allow for, for appointments of people who cannot run. Uh, for transparency, I think we should have more private sector representative in the BPP governing board, not designated or appointed by the president. It should come from private, legitimate private organizations who have relevant opinion on the PPP process and PPP projects. In particular, since this is financial, the representative maybe of the banking association of the And because a lot of it has infrastructure, the representative from the Philippine Contractors Association. Certainly not from the National Competitive Council, who I understand is also appointed. And the council that supervises was reporting directly to the president. In terms of the penalty provisions, it is good to put into the law. But uh, what happened to those who deliberately trigger the default clause so that the private contractor can recover his payments sooner than later? Case in point, should it also cover what is happening now on the MWSS? Manila was to, supposed to raise the pay and to enter the process arbitral. It won a favorable decision up to now. It could not get, could not be allowed to raise the pay. Who is liable in this case? Should that, if, if that have any delay will in fact cascade into higher uh, rates in the future, should that be part of the guarantee fund that is conceived here? So those are the things that we would like uh, only to raise here and the other things we're willing to discuss. Interesting suggestions. Uh, we look forward to the, you laying them out in detail in your uh, position paper. Uh, I'm afraid we have come to the uh, scheduled end of uh, this hearing. Uh, and so we will be calling you back. There are obviously many, many details that need to be discussed. We have only really discussed the session at this point and focused on the single issues, uh, the transparency and the, yes, uh, and the, the uh, uh, other issues raised by Senator Reckon. But we will take them up uh, in the future. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry the other thing we didn't get to you, but we will at some point uh, because we uh, will need to hear from all of you. Uh, thank you for coming uh, this uh, morning. Uh, we are